Hey y'all, Tanny Cooks here, and today I'm gonna show you how I make my macaroni and cheese. Now, there are a million ways to make macaroni and cheese, and my recommendation is that you make macaroni and cheese the way you like to eat it, or your family likes to eat it. I'm gonna show you my preferred way to eat it because this is the way my mother made it as I was growing up. I make my favorite type of macaroni and cheese without making a cheese sauce. Yes, I said without a cheese sauce. I know that's all the rage on social media, for macaroni and cheese recipes, but to me, cheese sauce mac and cheeses tastes more like box macaroni or stovetop, which is not my favorite way to eat it. Now, I have made it on my channel, and I have those videos up now, because I like to make the same recipe several different ways. But what I'm gonna show you is my way to make macaroni and cheese. Now, I did a short for this maybe a year ago or so, and it got some hate comments on it. Some people taught me my macaroni was too dark. It was too brown. One person would say it looked too greasy. The next person say it looked too dry. Somebody said my cheese broke. I'm going to show you why my macaroni looks the way it looks and why this is my preferred method. And then we're also going to talk about some of the variations you can do with macaroni if you want to do things differently than me, which is completely cool. I'll cook the way I want to eat and then you cook the way you want to eat and we can all live happily together. Okay. <laughs> So first I'm gonna talk about a few of the basic principles and then we'll get to cooking. So for this beginning part, we're gonna talk about our pasta noodles. So the first ingredient we're gonna need for our macaroni and cheese is our macaroni, our pasta. Elbow macaroni is traditional, but you really could use any pasta you want. Any pasta with a hollow center will be great for mac and cheese because the custard and the cheesiness can all accumulate inside of that hollowness area and be very delicious. Now, I also buy store-bought macaroni or name brand. I usually buy whatever's on sale, buy one, get one free. And I like to buy my pasta in 16 ounce boxes because that is the proportion I use to make one pan of macaroni and cheese. The next ingredient we're gonna talk about is our milk. I like to use evaporated milk and heavy cream. I use carnation milk. Some people may use pet milk. It comes in 12 ounce cans. And I love using heavy cream because it just adds to the custard. But some people like my mother will use whole milk instead of heavy cream because it is a bit cheaper. And thirdly, we're gonna use some eggs. Now you can leave eggs out of this recipe. A lot of people don't like it, but look at how these eggs make my macaroni sit up like cake. I don't leave it out. Next, we need to look at our cheese. You can use any cheese that melts well. I like to use a combination of medium cheddar, sharp cheddars like extra sharp, New York sharp. You can use mozzarella cheese. You can use provolone, gouda, Colby. There's a big variety of cheeses you can use. Just use what melts well that you like. So I wouldn't use Swiss cheese or feta cheese. Next up, we have our dry seasonings. I like to mix in some onion powder and ground mustard into my macaroni and bake it and the proportion I use is larger than what most people use. So for you, I would recommend start off with a half a teaspoon or one teaspoon in your milk and taste it and see what you think. We're going to get to the specifics of that a little bit later in this video. And then I sprinkle paprika and black pepper on top. The next thing to consider is our pan. I like to use a 13 by 9 pan. It's great family size. I get about 12 to 15 servings. I do like to use my Gotham steel pan because it's nonstick and it has high walls, so I don't have to worry about my ingredients spilling over in my oven. Like I do with my 13 by 9 pan that's made out of glass, but the walls are a little bit shorter. This is a full size aluminum pan. You can see how big it is, so you probably probably need to make a double batch of my recipe if you use that. I never make this in a whole pan. I do use these half pans. So two half aluminum pans fit into one full pan. So I'll bake in the half pans and then just place them in the full pan to transport it. Now you can see the half pans are shorter than 13 by 9, but I didn't actually measure them. So you will need to make adjustments if you're using a different size pan than 13 by 9. So these are the actual ingredients you're going to need. 16 ounces of dry macaroni, two 12 ounce cans of evaporated milk, two cups of heavy cream, two large eggs, 32 ounces of cheese, three tablespoons of butter, and dry seasonings to taste. These are all of my ingredients for one pan of mac and cheese as we discussed. I do let my eggs, butter, and cream sit on the counter for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes before I start the recipe as the first step. The second step I do is I actually grate all of my cheese first because after this step, everything goes fast, but I grate my cheese by hand, so I do that first. Next up, I bring a pot of water up to a boil, and the instructions for making your pasta are on the back of the box. 
as you can see here. So I let my water come up to a boil, but I only boil my noodles for seven minutes because I don't rinse them afterwards to cool them down. So I slightly undercook them in the beginning. That's just my personal preference because we're going to season them as you see. So I have my water boiling. I'm going to sprinkle some salt in. I don't actually measure this, but we're making salted water. So some of that flavoring will be absorbed into our pasta noodles. I have my 16 ounce box of macaroni noodles here. And to this, I am going to add some onion powder. Again, I'm not measuring. You could also do a sprinkle of garlic powder, but to me, this flavor adds to this pasta in such a delicious way. I don't want to rinse it afterwards. So once I take it out of the boiling water, it's going to be ready for me to go. So while that's boiling for seven minutes, I'm going to crack my two eggs in a separate bowl. I never had a bad egg, but I do sometimes get the shell dropped in it. So it's easier to pick the shell out if it's in a shallow bowl by itself. I set that to the side and next up I'm going to open up my can evaporated milk. This can evaporated milk is Carnation brand. You can also use the pet brand. You do want to shake it well as it says and I do always rinse off the top because dust can settle on it in the store. These are 12 ounce cans. I am using my triangle tip can opener to put a triangle in each side just like my mama did when I was little. I make my recipes based upon what I saw her do. And so I have a big bowl and what I'm gonna do is first pour in my two cans of evaporated milk. Now evaporated milk is creamy and luscious because some of the water that occurs in dairy milk has been evaporated out. I think 30 to 40% of the water is out. So that's why evaporated milk is creamy. Now I'm gonna add onion powder. If you've never added onion powder, I would suggest you start with half a teaspoon of onion powder and then one teaspoon of ground mustard and give it a stir and taste that with the evaporated milk just to see how you like it. I personally like to add a full teaspoon of onion powder and a full tablespoon of ground mustard because that's the flavor profile I like. But you can add that to your evaporated milk and taste it before you add the egg because you don't want to get sick from tasting raw egg. So after I season my evaporated milk, then I add my two eggs in and I give it a whisk on my counter. Now I have my heavy cream. This is a big carton of heavy cream, but I'm not going to use all of it. For a 13 by 9 pan, I typically only use two cups of heavy cream, but I'm measuring it here just so you guys can see the measurements. Typically, I don't use measuring cups when I cook a lot of things, but now that that's done, my macaroni is finished boiling for the seven minutes. I have cold water running on the side of my sink. I have the colander in my sink, and then I pour my hot macaroni in the sink. Hopefully, I don't burst any pipes under my sink because that cool water I don't put any cold water over my cooked noodles because these are seasoned again it's my personal preference to season and undercook my pasta but you do what you prefer I'm putting my seasoned pasta in a big bowl and then next what I'm going to do is start to add in some seasoning. So I did decide to add my black pepper in it because I think my mama did that too so black pepper goes inside. I don't measure it so just use a small amount um, and then taste it and see what you think. Then I'm adding a little bit of cheese. So I'm just adding a handful of mozzarella, a handful of my extra cheddar. Now I am going to mix all of my mozzarella because I don't like the white cheese is sprinkled on top because it's already going to be a little light on top because of the heavy cream. So I mix all of my eight ounces of extra sharp cheese and all of my eight ounces of mozzarella and just stir that into your noodles. You don't want to over stir, but you can notice the cheese is starting to melt with the hot pasta. And this is going to help it melt into the center of the crust crevices of our noodles. And now I'm mixing my cheesy pasta into my bowl of seasoned evaporated milk and I'm giving it a light, a light turn as you can see. So yes, the pasta is warm, but it does cool down when I add the cheese as well as the milk. And look at that. Look at how luscious this looks. Now tell me this looks dry to you. It doesn't. I didn't use a roux with flour and butter. I didn't use a prepared cheese sauce. Or I didn't make a cheese sauce because I didn't want to do that step. But you can do what you want. But look at how creamy this looks before we bake it. So the ending appearance isn't always what the actual food is like when I eat it. So people who are watching food videos should probably keep that in mind. Food can taste very different than what it may look like to you, but I'm going to stop talking about that. So here I have my 16 ounces. This is actually more like 20 ounces of my medium cheddar because I like a little extra cheese because I'm extra and my family likes it. So in my 13 by 9 pan, it has not been warmed up. It's a cold pan. I'm just adding about two tablespoons of butter in the pan and I wiped it with a paper towel just so it wasn't too much extra butter. 
And then I'm putting my mac and cheese mixture inside of the pan. The butter in the pan is going to help it to brown on the bottom. And my family like the crispy bits. And that's another reason why I like to use a metal pan. So I have my heavy cream on the side. And then I have my remainder of my medium sharp hoop cheddar cheese. And so I'm going to add some of the cheese on top. And even though we're adding this cheese on top, we are going to stir it a little bit with the spoon. Just so it settles a bit below the surface. And as I do that, I notice I do that a lot extra. It's kind of like a hairdresser when she does your hair and she's happy with it. She kind of plays in a little bit just because she's satisfied with her work. And I think that's what I'm feeling right now in my mac and cheese. So I do have some cubes of cheese. So as I'm shredding my cheese by hand with a box grater, when I get to the ending pieces, I don't try to cut my finger or shred my finger. I just break those pieces off by hand. And I like to stick those big chunks in because my family likes it. So now I am adding in some heavy cream, about a cup worth, because I want to see that heavy cream incorporate with everything else that's in the pan. It will allow the cream and the cheese to come together and soak and absorb into the crevices of the noodles. And that's what I like. Technically, you could mix this heavy cream in the beginning with your evaporated milk if you like. I usually don't do that because I usually just don't measure it. But again, do what you want to do because it's your food. But two cups is about enough heavy cream for the remainder part of the recipe that we've already discussed. So you can see I'm just adding it in bit by bit and then I'm giving it a stir to make sure everything incorporates nicely. It's a delicate balance between having your macaroni, your custard, and your cheese. So you don't want too much custard, but you don't want too little custard because then it would actually be dry and not flavorful. So I don't want just macaroni and just cheese. That custard is a very important part in my baked southern macaroni and cheese. And so that's why I have it here. But I'm mixing it around on the top so that I don't have any big gaping holes of just custard. I kind of want each space to have a bit of custard milk, a bit of cheese, and a bit of noodles, if that makes sense to you. So now that I've mixed everything, the last bit of cheese that I'm scraping up, because this cheese isn't cheap, so I'm not wasting it. My hands are very clean. I'm just scooping it and placing it on top and spreading it out. I haven't showed you, but probably every one or two steps, I'm washing my hands again off camera. So at this point, I'm adding some smoked paprika on top. You can see the deep, rich color of the paprika will also impart a beautifully deep color as it cooks. And then because I'm a fat girl, I'm adding an extra tablespoon of butter on top. The butter is going to add flavor, of course, but it also browns and it will contribute to the beautiful golden brown color I want to see with the smoked paprika and the yellow cheeses on top. And so that's the reason it may look a little bit oily when it cooks because there is a lot of butter, a lot of cheese. But this macaroni is good when you make it the first day and then you refrigerate it and reheat it. That butter in it will reincorporate and keep the macaroni moist so it won't be dry. So now we're ready to put it in the oven. I'm going to take a piece of foil and spray it with some spray sunflower oil just so the cheese on top doesn't stick to the aluminum foil like cheese sometimes does in the top of a pizza box. So I bake this in an oven that's preheated at 350 degrees. My total time is about an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes. This is how it looks the first 30 minutes that it bakes. I took the foil off. You can notice it's still a bit jiggly and it's not golden yet. And there isn't much cheese that came off on the top foil. This is what it looks like after baking for one hour. Mostly cooked, but not deep golden yet. This is how it looks at an hour and 15 minutes. And this is how I like it. You can see it's still bubbly and it's still juicy. So I'm going to let it sit on my counter for about 15 to 20 minutes to reconstitute and set in the pan that it baked in. And if you don't like yours this dark, then you can take yours out a little earlier. Check it at the 45 minute mark or the 60 minute mark. You just need to make sure that it's cooked through and that the egg is fully cooked if you use that. And after mine set for 20 minutes on the counter, I cut it up into generous pieces and look at how delicious this slice looked, y'all. It's like a slice of cake, but it's macaroni and cheese. I absolutely love this. If you don't, I'm okay with it. It won't hurt my feelings any. So make this recipe. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm sure y'all are going to tell me anyway. And thank you so much for your patience and waiting for me to get this dedicated video for just my mac and cheese as opposed to me making it mixed in with other recipes as I've done in the past on this channel. So I hope you all have a very wonderful day and make yourself some absolutely delicious baked macaroni and cheese, tanny cook style. Thank you.